Hello, I'm Retro Rob. You may remember me from such public service announcements as Don't lick the Famiclone, it'll give you cancer. Don't eat the desiccant. And plastic bags do not keep babies fresh. But you probably don't. This week we're going to be taking a look at the At Games Pong Blast. Please note that I am a trained professional. Do not attempt to play this at home. Hello gamers, do I ever have a treat for you? Meet the Ad Games Atari Flashback Blast Volume 3 Pong and Atari Hits Edition. Thus far, this series has not done so well. However, I have some hope that this may stand a chance. What could possibly go wrong here? What could possibly go wrong? Here's the front of the box. You've got 20 built-in games. Mm, I'll show you that in a minute. Blast HDMI dongle. Unfortunately, to power it, you need a USB cable. The USB cable does come in there, but if you do not have USB power coming off of your TV, you're going to have to use like a cell phone charger or something. Only at Walmart. Lucky devils. 2.4 gigahertz wireless controller. Um, that used to be a pretty crowded band. I don't know if it's as bad now. Uh, back in the day, uh, you'd have wireless phones for your landlines, and those were all on the 2.4 gigahertz band, and they would bump into each other all the time. I'm running out of clip art. Could you just hurry up? Uh, there's not that many of those around anymore, so it's probably a little bit better than it used to be. 1080i high definition save and resume games and rewind games. I don't think save and resume is going to be very useful, but I think the rewind function might be. Pong and Atari hits. Blast! Here's the left side of the box. Rewind. Rewind your game to try and beat that tough boss as many times as you want. There are Atari games. There's no bosses. Easy to set up. Plug the dongle into the available HDMI port. Power the dongle with the included micro USB cable. Connect the cable to a USB port or USB AC adapter not included. Set your TV to the selected HDMI port and connect the wireless paddles and have a blast. Hopefully. Right side of the box, no wires. Already went through this. High def performance. HDMI dongle plugs right into your TV to power the fun. Superb 1080i visuals and HD output mean these classics look and sound better than ever. Save and load. Save and load games on the fly. Pick up right where you left off. Looks a lot like Kaboom, doesn't it? But that's not in this. Wish it was. There's the top of the box. At games. Here's the bottom of the box. Age 15 plus. Holy crud, that's a really high... I think I was like seven or eight playing Atari games. Why so old? That's weird. What? There's nothing really violent in there. Oh well. Packaging must be retained since it contains important information. You telling me I gotta keep your package? Controller requires two AAA batteries not included. Images are for reference only and actual product appearance and specifications may vary. Great. Uh, copyright, some act games crap, this device, blah blah blah. It's widely recycled but they don't want you to recycle it. Package includes a blast dongle, 2.4 gigahertz wireless paddles, micro USB power cable, instruction manual, and two stickers. Woo! All right, let's talk about the back of the box. Have a blast with your favorite classics. Timeless gameplay, wireless HD on a big screen. Pick up and play. You're sure to have a blast. All right, let's look at the games. Backgammon, yeah, that's not a blast. Ugh, Blackjack, not so great either. Breakout, that's pretty good. Canyon Bomber is pretty good too. I like that one. Circus Atari is good. Demons to Diamonds is pretty good. Night Driver, eh, not bad. Steeplechase, have not played. Street Racer, I used to like that game, but it is really pretty basic. Stunt Cycle, have not played. Super Breakout, have definitely played that one. Uh, all the Video Olympics games are like split up. That's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, to be honest with you. 
Uh, that way you don't have to, you know, cryptically figure out which game it is you're playing. I, I don't know if they should have counted that as like, you know, like eight separate games or whatever, but okay, I'll live with it. And finally, we've got Warlords, which as we all know is downright excellent. All right, so let's unbox this. I want you to note that I got this as a markdown, so I'm assuming this was a return, so it might be a little bit messed up inside. We'll see. Here we go. It's not like these ever get returned, no chance. All right, so we have the typical blast poster with instructions in it. Um, I'm not gonna go through too much trouble uh, for this anymore. I've We've seen this time and time again. Uh, it does mention the other products, the Activision Flashback Blast, which I might check out, the Atari version one, Atari version two, Atari version three, which is this one, the Legends Flashback, which we have already covered, and the Bandai Namco Flashback, which we have covered, both of which were not that great. Yeah, see? Somebody's pulled this sucker out. All right, we have, well, they do look pretty close to the original pals. They feel okay. We have this uh, pink flashback blast. You pull this open and you put the HDMI adapter in there. Note that if your TV has close quarters for the HDMI ports, you might not be able to fit this in and you may need an extra HDMI cable extender. That sucks. There is where you plug in the USB cable. Right there for power. Very exciting. Back to the controllers. Yep, it's two paddles hooked together. Yeah, they feel nice. They don't feel bad at all. Hopefully they'll work decently. Start, select, menu. On the side here is the on off switch and there is a rewind button, of course. All right, so here's the At Games paddle next to the Atari paddle. They look a lot alike. Uh, the plastics feel is pretty much identical. The button sticks out a little bit more on the Atari one and also the dial is much looser on the Atari version. Probably because it has different innards. Oh goodness, how could I forget? Two Pong stickers. That makes it worth it. All right, better put the batteries in first. There we go. Now we're ready to go. Ooh, blue light. All right, so here we are at the main menu. Using your controller, I can turn left to move down and select different games. I can also change columns by hitting this button and this button. There's about four rows of games here. If I hit menu, it will go to this, the multiplayer game instructions, where they try to sell you something. Uh, there's also a thing you can scan. Would have been nice if maybe, I don't know, they put instructions there or something, but whatever. Let's start by going over to Video Olympics Pong. All right, so here we are in Video Olympics Pong. Now note, this is the same game as like the basketball. All the VO or Video Olympics are the same game and they're not even really separated. It just starts you in the right spot. It's like a bookmark. So if I really want to, I can select through and I can get to the other games in this series. Some of them are better than others. Volleyball, basketball, and so forth. All right, let's start with Pog. And uh, this is kind of weird. I mean, it, it works okay, but when I start the game, I have to use this, this controller as opposed to the one I selected. So it kind of puts me at a disadvantage right away. Weird, right? There we go, got a point. Like a boss. The computer's okay on this, it's not uh, terrible. Eventually it'll get too fast. 
Well, it's missed. Alright, while I'm winning, let's go on to the next game. And here we have Video Backgammon for the Atari 2600. All these games are Atari 2600s, but I mention this because this was definitely never one of the greatest games. Um, one of the problems it has is, so far as I know, I cannot select Expert or Novice switches. So that means I always get to choose where the dice are going to roll on this game. So if I want a 1, all the way down to the bottom. Maybe I want a 3, right? There we go. 6. So, 1, 6. There we go. Computer's going first. There are other problems with this game, uh, namely it being backgammon, not one of my favorite games. Uh, but, uh, geez, I, that really sucks a lot of the fun out of the game, for me, anyway. It's not really rolling dice, it's just picking a number. All right, let's go on to the next game. Blackjack. All right, anyway, this is Blackjack. It's an okay version of it. It's not, like, perfect or anything. They don't have suits, but you don't need suits for Blackjack, so it's no big deal. You have all the basics here. You can hit, you can double down. Um, or you can stay, which I better do right here, unless I think I'm going to get an ace. Too bad I only bid one. Jeez. Yeah, I won. That's great. All right, so let's bid 25 here. So I got a 15. This is like the edge of where I should stay or hit. I'm going to hit, but I'm probably, oh no, perfect. Stay right there. Winner. Oh yeah, won me some money. Basically, when you run out of money, the game is over. It's really not bad. When I was a kid, I wasted a lot of time on this game. It's not terrible, really. You know, it just occurred to me that I could probably cheat the heck out of this. Let's see, I got six... 8, 16. I've got 17, so I shouldn't hit right now, but I'm going to hit. Come on now. That shouldn't be rewarded. All right, so I busted, but I can hit the rewind. Stay. I just won that hand. That is cheaty. Nice. And here we have Breakout, which is a complete and utter classic. And the controls work pretty decently on it. I haven't really had any problems with the controls at all. Uh, they're good enough. Much better than many of my Atari paddles, which are all jumping all over the place. Then again, my distance is only about one foot from the receiver, so your results may vary. So if I wanted to save my game here, <laughs> right before I'm about to lose that, I could hit the menu button and then I could hit fire to save the game. And then, boom, I'll be able to restore it at a different time. It's kind of cool, but on Atari games, it's really not that necessary. <laughs> I saved it, and I lost my ball. I hope that you have seen this game before. Ooh, that was a bad miss. Better rewind it. Meet Canyon Bomber, and it is freaking great, especially with two players. Basically, what you do is you fly over this canyon, and you try and take out as many blocks as possible. Eventually, somebody has way more blocks, and they win. The neat thing about this is there's multiple game modes in here. Um, one of them being this, where you basically are attacking these ships from the air. It's really fun. In fact, all the modes on here are really fun. Let's start with the basic one, though. So the computer is randomly dropping and sadly does way better than I do in general. But really you should be aiming for the deepest impact so you get as many of the deeper down uh, blocks as you can. Oh god, he is just whooping me. Come on. Very often you can make it all up in the end game though. Remember, each one you take is one he can't. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Mistakes were made. See, he's going to get... Dang. It's close. God 
that one. Got that one. Hmm. Come on. <sighs> he's not even aiming, and he's doing better than me. It makes me sick. <laughs> Go. Oh, he won. Darn it, 352 to 317. It was pretty close. Let me show you this other mode, too. Real quick. All right, so here's that other mode I was talking about. Basically, I use the paddle to select the depth. God, he's doing good. And uh, then I fire and hope it hits the ship at that level. I'm terrible at this. Dang it, he got the score for that. It almost seems to me that he gets way better luck than I do. Yeah. There we go. Got one. I'm going to do terrible. Yeah, he's going to get that one. Nope. Ha, I got it. At least I broke 100. Ah, oh, come on. Anyway, this game is good fun, if not a little frustrating. And here we have Circus Atari. Try to pop the balloons by hurling these fellas up in the air. Arr, get up there. Oh. <laughs> uh, this game. This game. Come on. There we go. There we go. Get up there. Get. Get. Mm. I love the way they look when they die. Or at least are horribly scathed. So it's a little bit like Breakout. But a little bit harder. Come on. No way. Not fair. Next. Demons to Diamonds. Which is a pretty decent shooter. You shoot the demons. Turn them into diamonds. Then shoot the diamonds. And yeah, good time. Pretty fun game, works well with the controls. Uh, make sure to press your button long enough to reach the top of the screen if you're trying to hit somebody up there, otherwise it'll come up short like that. But the controls work well, and it plays nice. However, one thing you might notice is that it's got that stinking filter on there. Uh, that anti-aliasing, and it does make it look a bit off. I'm kind of unhappy that they did that. I wish they would have just left the filter off. It would have looked better, in my opinion. You know, you can have your own opinion, though. That's okay. We encourage that here. Welcome to Night Driver, which is a port of an arcade game by Atari. It was an okay game. It did mediocre in the arcades. This is actually a pretty good home port of it. It looks okay. It has most of the elements of the original game, if not all of them. It's, it's, I guess, fun. Uh, it's dated not so well. But basically the idea is you race for the entire time of the timer counting down on the right side, and your point score is based on how far you make it. If you hit anything, of course, your car stops. So, uh, the longer I go, the more points I get. I don't think I've ever done a perfect on this. I've come really close, like only done one accident, um, but never did it all the way. It's not a terrible game. It's interesting. I don't know, you know, how much value there is for most gamers here, unless it's for uh, memory's sake. And here we have Steeplechase. I'm the yellow horse on the bottom who's about to lose. You can set the height of your horse's jumping with the dial. However, I found, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to care what I set the height to. It just kind of screws up. Yeah, I'm ahead right now, but, oh, see? Breaking his legs. And it's, it's low, so I shouldn't be. There we go. Getting better. Getting better. I'm pulling ahead. Too high. There. Oh. Oh. 
Oh. And it's old paint in the stretch. Glue stick in second. Can do this. Getting there. <laughs> this is pretty intense. Maybe one of the first endless runners. Well, it's not endless though. Yeah, won it. There you go. Kicking butt and taking names. Like your games long and grueling? Want a marathon session? Well, you'll like Street Racer then. Um, this can be played with two players or it can be played single player against a computer. I'm on the right, the computer is on the left. Basically, what you do is press the fire button to accelerate, let off of it, to brake, and then move left and right to steer your car and avoid the other cars. For each car you pass, you get a point. Whoever makes to 99 points first is the winner. It can be grueling. I used to be able to press on the accelerator the whole time and never hit one. But uh, those days are long gone. Ooh, man. Come on. Yeah, he doesn't stand a chance. I could probably sleepwalk the second half of this. Come on. Way better against another person. Which you can do because it does have two controllers. Not a bad game. Not an amazing game. Just kind of right down the middle. All right, and here we have Stun Cycle. Um, note that I am not listening to sound from my screen because for this game you need to actually be able to hear the sound. But I discovered a problem pretty much right away. Now this paddle absolutely works. I've been using it in other games. Been in the menu. But in Stun Cycle... It, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. It doesn't seem to care. So it just keeps accelerating and accelerating as if it is not reading the controls at all. So I don't know if I... I hadn't played this game before, but I don't think I'm doing anything wrong because I should be able to hear the pitch of the engine change when I'm doing this. It's just not having any effect whatsoever. So what the heck, all right? I, I don't know. Since I haven't played this on the system before, I'm not 100%, but it doesn't appear like this game works. All right, so I just did something I never do. I went on YouTube and scoured it for reviews of the Blast to see if anybody has landed Stunt Cycle on the Blast. Of the five or so reviews I found of it, only two reviews attempted to play it. Neither one landed it. One tried and tried and tried. And I heard no difference in that engine when it was running. If you listen to it on a real Atari 2600 or even emulate it, you do. So I think I'm safe in declaring that game is actually broken on the blast. Hey, if I'm wrong, let me know but I'm pretty sure I'm right here. And here we have Super Breakout. Everything that Breakout was plus superness. There's really no reason to play the original Breakout if you have this because you can play pretty much the original Breakout uh, as the first game. This is, I think, I think this is 6-1 uh, where you have the cavities with the extra balls in them. And then of course I have two paddles. But it's a really fun game. It's kind of that bridge between uh, the original Breakout and later games such as Arkanoid and Crackout and that kind of thing. Um, not not like it doesn't go all the way there. You don't have like boss enemies or anything, but you do have a very playable game and it's very fun, uh, especially with the paddle controllers. It's good stuff. You should enjoy it if you like retro games. Multiplayer games played by one gamer. And here is basketball. Sadly, basketball is two to four players only. 
And to play floor player, you are going to need another set of paddles that you can buy at At Games. But the basic idea here is to get the basketball into the hoop by bouncing it around Pong style. Let's see if I can, oh, wait, ah, where's the other controller? Where's, mm. it's actually pretty good fun if you have a friend around. And uh, it's especially funny because you can get a basket for your friend. Yeah, let's go on to the next game. All right, so here we have Foos Pong, which is for two to four players. And basically, uh, one player plays one set of paddles, the other plays the other, and it's just like foosball. You move your paddle back and forth to control, and then try to get it into the other team's goal, or your goal. You know what I mean. Let's go on to the next one. All right, and here is handball. Uh, basically, the idea is one player serves up the ball, uh, the other one hits it, and you alternate hitting it. There we go until somebody misses. And of course, the person missing the ball misses a point. Pretty easy, kind of fun if you got two players, but of course with one player, it's a bummer. All right, so here we have hockey. And this is a game I spent a lot of time on with my uncle because it's very competitive. And it is fun as heck to play if you've got two players. Of course, I don't right now, but if you do have two players, the basic idea is to score a goal on your opponent using Pong physics. It is fun, really. It's a lot of fun if you got two people. Quadra Pong. It's Pong for four players. You only have two controllers. So what is there to do? Oh, go buy another set from Hack Games. Yeah, I don't think I would do it just for this. <laughs> Maybe Warlords, but definitely not for this. It is basically just Pong. You try to score goals on another player, but it's four player. It's Super Pong. Pong with two paddles for two players. It's really quite a bit of fun if you got two players to play it. I mean, really, it is it is a blast. Blast! As much as Pong is. All right, let's go on to the next game. All right, so here's a game that's gonna be hard to demo with two players. However, it is essentially Pong in volleyball form. It is pretty cool. This is another game we play every so often uh, just because, you know, it's something different. And it's not bad. <laughs> Although that'll drive you nuts uh, when you serve and it just drops in and it'll go bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, so annoying. But nonetheless, if you got two players, it's really not a bad game. What's a great game like Warlords doing in a console like this? And here we have one of the best, if not the absolute best game on this particular collection, which of course is the classic Warlords. It's one to four players. The basic idea is to knock the blocks away from the enemy's castle and then kill their king by putting a ball in their face. One of the problems is, of course, so far as I know, again, uh, there's no expert or novice setting, so if you're used to playing on one setting or the other, you're not going to be able to do that here, so it might not play exactly as you remember it. And then, of course, the other problem is um, you're going to have to purchase two more paddles if you want to play four-player. Of course, that's true of a real Atari, but once you get up to the price of the extra two paddles, you almost could buy an Atari. But still, this is really, really a great game and fun to play still to this day. It's aged well. All right, so what's the verdict on this? Oh, oh, where do I go? <laughs> All right, well, we'll start with the hardware. The hardware is pretty good. Uh, construction quality on the paddles seems okay. They controlled really well, no problems there. Uh, the menu, the menu is bizarre. I don't know if you noticed, but I was constantly fighting with it and the way that they arrange the buttons, it's just, it, it doesn't feel right. Uh, it does have some nice features like the rewind function. It's a little baffling to use at first, but you get used to it. And it's handy in games like Pong where if you miss a ball, uh, you can rewind and try again. Uh, the save function isn't really that useful on here, but hey, it's a feature and I'm not gonna complain about having extras. 
the collection of games goes from horribly bad to uh, really quite good. Um, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that Stun Cycle's actually completely broken on this thing. <laughs> and that's too bad because that would have added a little bit more to the, um, to the value of this device. Um, a lot of the games are just one game split up. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a problem. Really, there's only about 12 games on here. Um, yeah, I, there's one four player game, which of course this can't support out of the box. You'd actually have to buy some more controllers. Uh, there is a lack of an expert slash novice, uh, selection. So you are stuck on however they set it, which, um, you know, if I'm wrong about that, let me know down below, but there's nothing in the manual about it. Uh, so I kind of feel hosed. So all in all, uh, at 20 bucks, would I recommend it? No, I, I don't think so. Um, if you can get on clearance, it might be worth it, like at a party or something, if you just want to play some two-player games. Um, but you'd have to spend more to get four players out of it. And at that point, it's probably worth it just getting one of the better flashbacks. That's it. That's all I have to say about it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully in a couple days, I'll have something better to show you. Bye.